This is week three of the second quarter, and we will be talking about chapter 10, which is rotational motion and angular um, acceleration, angular kinetic energy, etc. And one of the things to understand about this rotational motion is that it's very analogous to linear motion with, with a few caveats. And I'll emphasize there's a section in the lectures where I go over the table of various formulas. And you see the the one-to-one -one comparison between these formulas and how similar they are. It's important to keep that in mind as you do these problems is that there's a lot of similarities. And so moving forward, problem number one states... At its peak, a tornado with a diameter of 60 meters carries 500 kilometers per hour winds. What is the angular velocity in revolutions per second? Now, essentially, this is pretty simple. Um, what we want to do here is to uh, convert this to a rotational motion. But first, let's write down our, what we know. The diameter is 60 meters, so that means the radius is 30 meters, and the um, velocity, and in this case, when it talks, gives it in units like that, it suggests that this is linear velocity, kilometers per hour. Now, when I see something in kilometers per hour, immediately I change that to meters per second, which means multiply it by a thousand and divide by 3600. So. If you do that, you end up with 139 meters per second. And that's the linear velocity or tangential velocity. Now, the angular velocity is equal to the tangential or linear velocity divided by the radius. So this is going to be 139 meters per second divided by 30 meters. And so we end up with a um, rotational velocity of, or angular velocity of 4.63 radians per second. And then if we take that number and multiply it by 2 pi radians per revolution, we get the answer, which is 29.1 revolutions per second, per second which is quite fast. If you multiply that by 60, you get the revolutions or RPM. Problem number two states the following. An ultra centrifuge accelerates from rest to a rate of 100,000 revolutions per minute in two minutes. So you end up with an angular velocity of 100,000 revolutions per minute and this happens in a, in a time of two minutes, or 120 seconds. A, what is the angular acceleration in radians per second squared? Well, since it's asking for the answer in radians per second squared, that means we're going to have to change this number. We're going to have to change 100,000 revolutions per minute into radians per second. And so that's going to be one revolution is 2 pi radians. And there are 60 seconds in a minute. And so if we do the math on that, <clears throat> we get 1.047 times 10 to the 4 uh, fourth radians per second. And so alpha, which is the angular acceleration, is going to equal the angular velocity over the change in time, or the change in angular velocity, and we assume that we start from rest, so we go from zero to 1.047 times 10 to the fourth divided by, and we do that in 120 seconds, 
and this is radians per second. And you do the math on that, and you get 87.3 radians per second squared. So that's part one. Part two states, what is the tangential acceleration at a point 9.5 centimeters from the axis of rotation? So what is the tangential acceleration at a point 9.5 centimeters or 0 0.095 meters from the center of rotation? Now tangential acceleration is equal what I've called linear acceleration is equal to the angular acceleration times the radius of whatever point you're looking at. So it's going to be 87.3 radians per second squared times 0 0.095. And if you do the math here, you get 8.29. Meters per second squared. So the tangential acceleration at that point is 8.29. The third question asks to for the radial acceleration. Now, the radial acceleration, if you look back through the book, is another word for the centripetal acceleration. That is the acceleration that's directed toward the middle of the circle, and you'll remember that that's equal to v squared. This equals r squared, r omega squared time over r, which is r squared omega squared over r, which is r omega squared. This equals 0 0.095 times 1.047 times 10 to the fourth radians per second squared, and that equals 1.04 times 10 to the seventh meters per second squared. And if you divide that by 9.8, that gives you 1.06 times 10 to the sixth g. You have a grindstone, a disc, that's 90 kilograms and has a radius of 0.34 meters. So its mass is 90 kilograms and its radius is 0 0.34 meters. And it's turning at 90 RPM. ninety point zero RPM. And you press a steel axe against it with a radial force of twenty assuming the kinetic coefficient of friction of the steel is zero point two Calculate the angular acceleration of the grindstone. Now the assumption here is that this pressing this up against this will slow it down. So this angular acceleration is going to be a decrease from what's expected. So first of all, these two are in units that I can work with. This is not. So I'm going to have to change this. Actually, I'm not going to do that right now. Many times you, you need to change this 90 revolutions per minute to radians per second. And I, I guess I'll go ahead and do that since I'm doing it here. If you, if you do that, you get 9.42 radians per second. And I think everything else here is in units that we can work with throughout this problem. Now this problem 
is a little bit out of order in my mind. It's actually in, goes with a later part of the chapter, but you can go ahead and use this. You know that the inertial, the moment of inertia for the, a disk is equal to one half mr squared. You have m and r here, so you can do that calculation. You also know that the torque exerted on this disk is equal to the force, the friction force, times the radius. If we have a, a the, if we draw a picture of the disk, the the torque that's exerted is going to be, and it says tangential, so it's it's doing this business and it's slowing. So the force is going, the friction force is going this way, and the radius is this way, and so that. That torque is what's going to be slowing down the disk. So from figure 10.12, you know that a disk has an inertia, moment of inertia of this. And so you can write down the equation that the moment of inertia times acceleration, angular acceleration, is equal to the negative of the friction, because it's going against motion, times the radius well, let's be consistent with the units here, times the radius, which is little r. And <clears throat> therefore, so you can substitute this for this. So you have 1 half m r squared times alpha is equal to minus f r. Adjusting this, you have 2 minus 2 times f r divided by m r squared. That r cancels one of those r's, and you have minus 2 f over m r. And so if you put in the numbers now, minus 2 and 0 0.2 times 20 is 4 divided by 90, which is the mass, times the radius, which is 0 0.34. And if you do the math here, you get minus 0 0.26 radians per second squared, which means it's slowing down at this rate when you apply the, the x to it. The second part says, how many turns will the stone make before coming to a stop. So if we assume that this continues until it stops, so that omega is equal to omega naught plus alpha t, and omega is zero, it's going to go until it stops. Omega naught is this number right here, plus alpha, which is a minus 0 0.26 times t. And if we solve this for t, we get 36.2 seconds. Then we use that 36.2 seconds. Theta is equal to omega naught t plus 1 half alpha t squared, which is equal to 36.2 times 9.42 plus 1 half times 0 minus 0 0.26 times 9.42 squared. So theta now is going to equal 170.6 radians. And if you divide that by 2 pi, you get 27.2 revolutions. The next problem is fairly straightforward, and it states you are told that a basketball player spins the ball with an angular acceleration of 100 radians per second squared. What is the ball's final angular velocity if it starts from rest and accelerates for two seconds? Well, that's pretty straightforward. If the angular acceleration, if the angular acceleration is 100 radians per second squared, and it goes for two seconds, and starts from rest, if you write the formula out, it looks like that. 
And so you have omega equals omega zero is zero, so it's alpha t, alpha is 100, and t is two, so it's gonna be 200 radians per second. Now it asks you a couple of questions. First it says, what is unreasonable about this result? Well, if you change this to revolutions, if you divide this by two pi, if you divide it by two, you get 100. You divide by approximately three, a little over three, you get 30 something. And that's 30 something revolutions per second, which is totally unreasonable. Which premises are unreasonable and inconsistent? Well, the premise that anybody could spin something with this kind of angular acceleration is pretty ridiculous. And the premise that they could do it and it remain uniform and consistent for two seconds is also pretty ridiculous. So both of those premises uh, don't really fit into reality. Let's do one more before we move on to another. Let's do one more before we move on to another video. Number five. With the aid of a string, a gyroscope is accelerated from rest, so omega zero is equal to zero, to 32 radians per second, so omega final is equal to 32.0 radians per second, and that acceleration occurs in 0 0.4 seconds. What is the angular acceleration in radians per second squared? Well, this is very easy. Alpha is delta omega over delta t. And delta omega is omega w minus omega zero. So that's going to be 32.0 divided by 0 0.40. So 32 so the answer to that is going to be 80 radians per second squared. And taking a look, just checking on my significant figures, I actually have one too many significant figures here, so this zero shouldn't be in here. There's only two significant figures in this answer. The second, the second question, how many revolutions does it go through in the process? So in the time it takes it, in this 0.4 seconds, how many revolutions does it take? So theta, equals omega zero t plus one half alpha t squared. Omega zero is zero, so we can scratch that off. This is one half times 80 times 0 0.4 squared. And so this is gonna be a total of 6.4 radians. And as it turns out, that's approximately one revolution.